Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, May the 13th, 2024. Today, I want to talk about the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, there was a Eurovision Song Contest over the weekend and I thought I would uh, look at the astrology of the event and, you know, we had a winner, uh, a Swiss uh, non-binary singer, rapper by the name of Nemo. And there were lots of other stuff. There was lots of other stuff going on. Um, someone got uh, knocked, knocked out of a competition. I think the word is disqualified um, for behaving in what was considered to be a poor way towards... Um, some woman who was taking his picture and then we had protests about about Gaza so it was uh it was a bit uh eventful uh the Eurovision Song Contest and I was also thinking about the Eurovision Song Contest uh in the sense of that maybe it's just a feature of the decline of the West. I mean, this is not, I'm not saying anything bad about the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, you should, you can regard it in a symptomatic way. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was thinking um, about this American intellectual, Camille Paglia, uh, Paglia, I don't know if I pronounced that right. And she is a, a feminist, I, I believe, a particular type of feminist. And, she went to Yale and uh, she's she's come up with a lot of evolving theories uh, in her life as an academic. But she did have this interesting idea about what it means, you know, what, what you can what it means when you've got the West going into decline and what what sim what symptoms you should be looking at. And she has a, th a theory. You can see her theory on YouTube, she she talks about it in several instances, on quite a few instances, as far as I can see. Uh, it's suggesting that as a society starts to decline, uh, you get an increasing obsession with sex, and she sees this in the Roman Empire, perhaps in in very small micro societies like Weimar, that people do get more concerned about sex. She talks about classical civilization statues losing their masculinity as a sign of the decline of the West. And I suppose, you know, you can see with how sex has to come up everywhere. You know, for example, this latest um, winner of the Eurovision Song Contest, uh, this Swiss singer, uh, rapper, uh, Nemo, who I think identify his... The pronouns one should use for Nemo are they. So, and the song, the code is about the non-binary non -binary experience. And so perhaps this is a sign that uh, the West is is beginning to lose its cohesion. And I mean, I'm not absolutely sure why this obsession with sex is a sign of, um, of a society which is on the brink. And I actually also makes this interesting claim that when you have societies that are concerned about sex they are sort of not just losing their cohesion but it's also about what's happening on the outside on the outside of society at the gates of society you get elements who are incredibly masculine like she I think in one of her videos, she she talks about you know for example the vandals and the Huns um, ready at the gates to bring down in Roman society and perhaps we can see a similar situation here in in the West and so I was thinking about that uh, when considering the Eurovision Song Contest but still it's got nothing to do with the Eurovision Song Contest the, said the Eurovision Song Contest is just a symptom, perhaps, of the West, of people just sort of dancing around on the brink, perhaps unaware of the impending catastrophe, the impending catastrophe that may be about to um, 
overwhelm all of us. But, you know, anyway, sorry, I'm ranting. Um, what I want to do before looking at the Eurovision Song Contest is look at what's going on today, which is um, Monday, uh, May the 13th, 2024. So here is the horoscope of today set for noon now those two photographs that on the right is nemo and i will be looking at nemo's chart i don't have a time of birth for him on the left that is the first person who won the first um eurovision song contest uh lise asia and I, I want to look at her chart she was she apparently she was you know she won it in 1956 but she was trying to become the end and she was swiss by the way which is interesting so she was swiss and nemo is swiss and she was trying to get into the eurovision song contest she kept putting in entries i mean almost until her death um she died in her early 90s uh yeah so i'll be looking at her chart but uh before I do that, I want to look at today. And here is the chart for today. Um, you can see that the moon is in early Leo. So the moon went into Leo or goes into Leo at 11.36 a.m. London time. So that means um, that if you're in the Americas, Moon goes into Leo really early in the morning, so you can basically regard it as a moon in Leo day. If you're in Europe, then first half of the day is more moon in Cancer. Last half of the day is when you get to feel moon in, moon in Leo. If you're in Australia and New Zealand, well, the moon doesn't really go into Leo until late in the evening, so you can probably regard it as being a moon in cancer day now let me just uh, change the house systems on that uh, because I, there's no real need to have um, placidus house cusps there uh, okay there we go so moon and leo is main thing uh, going on and uh it's a big change, isn't it, from moon in Cancer. So the moon moving from Cancer to Leo is, you know, you get we get some fire coming in. Uh, we've, we've had the moon in, moon in Cancer, which is sort of more restrained. Cancer doesn't feel it needs to um, uh, attract a lot of attention. And it's, you know, it's receptive. Whereas the moon in Leo, it's it's positive. It wants attention. And the moon in Leo makes an opposition to Pluto. So with moon opposition Pluto, some of us may have a great need for attention. And it might be a bit of a struggle, might be somewhat stressful trying to get that attention. Though... As I say with Pluto, Pluto can always work two ways. And with moon opposition Pluto, it can be that we're afraid of attention. You know, what would happen if we were to get attention? And that might be a concern with moon and, moon and Pluto. But uh, still, the issue of attention is important to us. And we have to remember that the moon in Leo is different from the sun in Leo. Sun in Leo is very strong. A sun is in its own sign in Leo. Moon in Leo, well, the moon has no dignity in the sign of Leo. So it's kind of a bit weak and it's looking for attention, but can it always get that attention? OK, it is true that there is a mixed reception between the sun and moon, which does mitigate that. So moon is in Leo, which is in the sign of the sun, and the sun is in Taurus, which is in the exaltation of the moon. So there is a certain sympathy between the sun and the moon, which might make it easier for us to get attention than usually usual when the moon is, is in this sign. But still... There is something a little bit fragile um, about that sign placement, the moon in Leo. 
the same time, we have got Venus sextile Saturn. There is Venus at 17 Taurus and it is sextile Saturn at 17 Pisces. And Venus sextile Saturn is um, about discipline and restraint. I mean, I mean discipline in quite a gentle way. So Venus sextile Saturn um, in terms of relationships, we might want to gently be in control, um, but not in an over-the-top way. Uh, in terms of emotions, there is not a great deal of water in the sky at the moment. We've just got Saturn and Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces. Uh, so it is a time when there's not so much emotion flying around, especially once the moon moves into moves into Leo, kind of depends what your time zone is. If you're in Australia and New Zealand, of course, you're going to have moon in, moon in Cancer all day. So, yeah, there's still um, a lot of water there. But if you're in America, then there are going to be fewer emotions flying around than usual. And that Venus sextile Saturn does help to control those feelings. Any feelings that are available, um, they're going to be under tight control. And this might be a good time for restraint, not just about emotions, but perhaps about money and not being overindulgent. And perhaps we can go some way towards containing our worst excesses, assuming we have these excesses. But uh, it's not a completely restrained day. Mars is aspecting the Jupiter-Uranus midpoint. So there is Jupiter and Uranus. Oh, there's a Sun-Uranus conjunction as well, which I will talk about in a minute. But there is Jupiter-Uranus Jupiter uh, and Mars is making a semi-square to the Jupiter-Uranus midpoint. So if Mars is making a semi-square to the Jupiter-Uranus midpoint, then it may be a time where you know many of us do want our freedom. The principle of Jupiter and Uranus is, is about freedom. We want to be able to do what we like. And if we don't get our way, well, we might get annoyed about it and we might cause a fuss. And some of us might want to deliberately create a conflict. We may feel that things are just brewing, brewing, and it's getting to a stage where we want to lance the boil. And with Mars, semi-square Jupiter and Uranus, it's with Jupiter, Uranus midpoint, this is might, might be what some people want to do. Is it going to be us? could well be. So if you feel that something is really coming to a head, maybe now is the time to bring up the issue. Now, that doesn't mean anything. There's going to be um, a harmonious resolution. It could be a screaming argument, but maybe sometimes screaming arguments are necessary. And that brings me on to what is probably the main aspect of the day, and that is a conjunction between the Sun and Uranus. I was going to have the Sun-Uranus conjunction as my theme today, but I think I wanted to talk about the Eurovision Song Contest instead. Maybe I'll talk about the Sun conjunct Uranus tomorrow as, as a theme. So with Sun conjunct Uranus in, in Taurus, some people are going to be very stubborn. They are going to want their way. And I suppose that links in a way with the moon in Leo. Moon is a fixed sign. Um, moon in Leo kind of wants its way. Certainly moon in Leo wants appreciation. And moon in Leo doesn't really like compromising. And so with sun conjunct Uranus, uh, that can be really quite difficult. Although it's can be very independent-minded, uh, extremely independent-minded, Sun conjunct Uranus. So we have to ask, who is being independent-minded? Who is being stubborn? Who is digging their heels in? Is it us or is it someone else? And with the Sun-Uranus conjunction, we can have events of a Sun-Uranus nature, explosive events, 
revolutionary events and so we we do need to be prepared for that so if we are doing something dramatic or a slight but slightly off the beaten track you know that something that's a bit unusual we might we might re- find we might get ourselves into a situation where it suddenly starts to escalate out of nowhere and that goes that goes back to the sun conjunct uranus it it is somewhat unstable it's not about flexibility it's about things breaking rather than bending turning to the heliocentric picture now because we have got sun conjunct uranus geocentric that of course means that we're going to have sun sorry earth earth opposition uranus geocentric so let me uh, let me turn to that coordinate system heliocentric there we go so there is the heliocentric picture for today and you can see there's the earth in scorpio and it is opposition uranus in taurus so that's a reminder of how the, the sun and Uranus translates from a heat into a heliocentric picture. And in a way, I think the heliocentric picture is more stark. It's more telling about what that energy is about. Earth opposition Uranus. We're here on the planet Earth and we can feel that uh, things are really happening and um, it could yeah it could be revolutionary events surprising events so that is something something that uh, we should perhaps be ready for also from a heliocentric point of view we have got venus making a sextile to mars now that venus sextile mars um, perhaps tells us something about the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. Um, I suppose that the Euro- Eurovision Song Contest was on Saturday and uh, the, the Venus sextile Mars would have been um, a bit earlier. It still would have been a bit out, um, quite a few degrees from exactitude. But still, that might have got a feel for how that Venus sextile Mars was actually actually working it could be um, uh, about perhaps an emphasis on sexuality because when you've got venus sextile mars uh, you do you do have an increased concern about sex in society and i would have thought um, uh, nemo winning this winning at the Eurovision Song Contest with this song, The Code, which is about the experience of being non-binary. I mean, that's real <laughs> Venus sextile Mars. And it's a societal thing. It's talking about something, what is going on in Western society. And of course, Western society, if it really is in a state of decline, um, as Camille Paglia is suggesting, uh, it, we would expect society to really pick up on this venus sextile mars now, aside from you know, the societal aspect i mean i suppose on a personal level you know venus sextile mars does emphasize the, the importance of sexuality and charisma and people can get our way uh, can people can get their way through um being charming and charismatic and attractive with that venus sextile mars so i i don't think it's a particularly difficult energy i mean it's a sextile and so maybe there are ways to use that venus sextile mars in terms of how we present ourselves how we dress the things we say it's all about attractiveness and if we can find a way to be attractive then yes we can um, have a powerful impact on the world around us and that's it from a heliocentric perspective, though a reminder that the Earth is now moving towards the Jupiter-Uranus midpoint. So the Earth is going to be picking up on that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction um, very soon. Um, 
in a couple of days' time. Also, we need to monitor that Mars-Saturn conjunction. It's now two and a half degrees apart, so it's getting really close. And in a few, day, a few days' time, that Mars-Saturn conjunction is going to be exact. And I do think that could be difficult. It could be connected with um, decay, with things being stuck, and destruction, and, and war, and devastation. So we need, to, we need to monitor that. And what I'm going to try and do is talk about that conjunction at length and um, maybe consider how this conjunction has worked in the past. I mean, not that it's a particularly unusual conjunction, Mars conjunct Saturn. It does happen every few years, but I think that's, I do need to say something about it. OK, uh, that's it with the overall picture. And what I want to do now is look at today from the perspective of the 12 signs. Uh, okay, so these are my forecasts for today, uh, which is Monday, May the 13th, 2024, for the 12 signs. Aries. Aries, you are in a strong position, I think, uh, because you want things to happen and you are in a position where you can actually make them happen. And I think the key thing about your approach is going to be your enthusiasm. You've got to be enthusiastic. And if you do hit any hurdles, there's always going to be a way around them. And it's just very important not to give up. So if you don't give up, you keep moving, Aries, then I'm really confident um, that you can get spectacular results. And there might also be a sense today of relief. There may have been something that has been bothering you and you've wanted to find a resolution and it's been difficult to find a resolution. But finally, Aries, you make the breakthrough. I, I'm not absolutely sure where that breakthrough is going to take place. It could actually take place in terms of money. So if there is a financial issue that has been bothering you, Aries, then today might be the day when you actually find a way of resolving it. So don't sit on any financial problems you have. Um, you know, but, you know, maybe you're waiting for someone to do something and it's it's just making you nervous and and perhaps you're not in a in a particularly powerful position, at least that's how it feels, but then you actually go and do something and things can happen quickly. So Aries, it's it's just really important that you have a great um a great belief in yourself. Because, yes, you, you can make things happen. And I think that you're going to be helped by the fact that the moon is moving into Leo. Of course, this does somewhat depend on your time zone. If you're an Aries in Australia, New Zealand, you're not going to feel the moon moving into Leo until very late tonight. And realistically, not until tomorrow, Tuesday. But with the moon moving into Leo, Aries, I think that you're going to be... Uh, creative and, as I said, optimistic. We get more evidence that you know optimism works, and at the same time, you're going to have a great sense of fun. A gr indeed, a growing sense of fun. But it's important that people don't get in your way, because you know the moon is making an opposition to Pluto, so there may be forces out there that are trying to hold you back. Maybe your friends are being a restraining influence. And it's a restraining influence that I don't think is helpful. So if you are doing something you enjoy that and other people seem annoyed, well, I think in most cases you should just be selfish. I mean, after all, selfishness is a word that is often associated with Aries. And I don't say that to be negative or to be critical of Aries. I think that 
being selfish is actually an important part of the Aries experience. And it really is okay to be selfish, you know, especially if you're doing something that's really important to you. Um, you're, in, you're, in, you're, you're enjoying doing it. Well, why shouldn't you be selfish? And you certainly shouldn't get tied up in past struggles people saying no you shouldn't you should be doing something else no you you really have got to um, be independent minded now that doesn't mean to say that you should be completely ignoring other people venus is making a sextile to saturn venus is of course ruler of your seventh house and venus in the aries chart has a big impact on relationships and so with Venus making a sextile to Saturn, you may find that the people close to you, uh, for example, partners, uh, are going to be quite disciplined and they're going to want things done in a particular way. Now, you have to decide how to deal with this. On one hand, you cannot compromise your core creativity. On the other hand, you need to respect other people's sensibilities, uh, particularly if these people are important to you. And so if you're going to do something that's very different, uh, that's perhaps a bit selfish, you perhaps have to do it in the right way. Uh, you, you don't have to perhaps inform people about what you're doing. You don't have to make a big deal about it. Uh, you can respect other people's boundaries but also respect your own need for freedom and independence. Taurus. Venus is your ruler, and Venus is making a sextile to Saturn. So with Venus sextile Saturn, um, I think that you're going to be quite restrained today. Not in the sense of being inhibited or having to hold anything back. I just think that you're going to be quite well organized and you're going to be in control and you're going to be able to think things through. And I suppose you're going to be slow and deliberate, but only up to a point. I think that you understand that there is always a, a right way of doing things. And I think that you're going to respect other people, you know, particularly friends, other people you have to deal with. You, you, you will have a respect from them and you will understand that that will constrain your action. And I think your sense of, resp your sense of responsibility um, will do you good. Though, at the same time, the sun is making a conjunction to Uranus. There is an exact sun-Uranus sun conjunction today, and it's in Taurus. So with that sun-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, you're going to have a strong sense of your own identity and the importance of being free and independent. So while you're quite happy to respect other people and to an extent to moderate your behavior, to fit in with outside expectations, there is a limit to that. And if you try to try to restrain yourself too much, then you might jump the opposite way. After all, the sun is conjunct Uranus and sun conjunct Uranus can in certain situations, be explosive. So if you find yourself in a situation where you are being hemmed in, where your freedom is not being respected, then things could really start to happen. There could be something a little bit explosive about that conjunction between the sun and Uranus. Also, the moon is changing sign. The moon is moving from Cancer into Leo. And so with the moon moving into Leo, I think, Taurus, that you are going to put a high premium on your own space. 
being secure in your own space and you're not going to want too much interruption and you're you're really going to try to avoid past struggles and you might feel that having to engage with lots of other people or having to go into work um, dealing with um, other people's issues it's not something you're really going to want to deal with but it may be something you have to deal with and that is because this moon opposition so this moon in leo is opposition pluto and so like it or not you may get involved with in with some past struggles you know who is in control that's a real issue with moon opposition pluto um and and you may feel a bit overwhelmed if you decide to engage so if there is a past struggle going on if if there are people who are vying for supremacy it's tempting to get involved but once you do get involved you're going to be into in getting you'll be involved in something that is really quite obsessive and it just may become really difficult to express yourself and you may actually realize that you haven't got as much power as you'd like to have and you may feel that you know there are these huge battles involving other people and you just can't cope it's like uh, you're just looking up at these sort of giants uh, hammering it out with each other and you know what can you do and you can feel the trembling earth as these giants smash around the place um so probably taurus that's something yeah that you just don't really want to engage with and so i think overall just try to keep it fairly simple you can be a rebel if you want to be a rebel but uh possibly only when you're really pushed and in, with the venus sextile saturn i think you really do have a chance to organize your world and also be able to organize some most of the people around you i say most because there do seem to be certain people probably people you don't know very well but who nonetheless can't be avoided who are involved in some kind of power struggle and yeah probably that's not really something you want to get tied up in gemini gemini you're fairly charismatic today um, i think that you can get people to like you um, without much difficulty you just you just know what to say you know how to behave and i think that you're going to regard um harmony as being something very important more important than usual i mean you don't normally associate gemini with harmony but today i i think that is going to be important you're you're going to want people to get on and you'll be thinking about community just the people you have to interact with on a day-to-day -day level and yeah you're going to want people to be happy and i i think that that is very much something you can do and i understand that there are people out there who are trying to cause trouble after all the sun is conjunct uranus that suggests individuals who perhaps are very independent minded um they want their way regardless um uh, you're aware that they exist but you don't really feel much sympathy with them and with all this stress yeah if you can just find a little bit of harmony that would be great and that's perhaps how gemini is seeing things and how do you create harmony well i suppose the best way of creating harmony would be to just communicate talk to people um tell people what's what's on them what's on your mind also don't be afraid of flattering people um i know that gemini's often don't really 
like flattering people. I mean, Gemini's like to analyse things. Giving someone a compliment just for the sake of it is just something that Gemini's don't want to do. But today it might be a good idea. Just, just by being nice to someone, telling someone how talented they are, even if you don't actually think they are talented or how beautiful they are. In fact, that might be a very good thing to do because um, remember, Gemini, but from a heliocentric perspective, there is a sextile between Venus and Mars. And so this Venus-Mars sextile is about attractiveness and beauty and people like to think that they're beautiful and attractive. And just by telling someone that they look good, um, it can go a long way. And I suppose Gemini's are quite good at that kind of thing. Um, false praise? No, I, I'm probably being a bit too cynical there. Just make people feel good. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not true. Um, the, the key thing is to, to make connections. And yes, you, you can certainly uh, make people feel good about themselves just with a few choice words. Really, that is... That is all it takes. And I think it's additionally going to be important that you make sure that you are in touch with people who maybe are about to go. Um, I suppose this is because Mercury is your ruler. Mercury is about to leave um Mercury's about to leave Aries and this is uh, something important because Mercury has been in Aries for, for some time. Mercury from a Gemini perspective is, um, well, it's your, it's your ruler and it's, when it's in Aries, it's very sociable. Um, there have been people to engage with. Mercury's been retrograde in Aries, it's been direct in Aries, it, Mercury's been all over the place in Aries. And you've kind of got quite used to Mercury being in Aries, and that might have been that you've got used to people being around you. But soon, they're going to go. Some people are going to go if you don't make a, an effort to keep in contact with them. Maybe you need to get someone's phone number before they go forever, or get their email address. Um, so that might be something to consider today. One other thing about Mercury, which is your ruler, Mercury is now at the same place it was on April the 1st. So what happened on April the 1st was that Mercury, your, your, Mercury, your ruler, went retrograde on April the 1st at around 27 Aries. So it went retrograde, it went backwards through um th through Aries then it went direct and now finally today Mercury has caught up Mercury's gone is back to where it was on April the 1st so if you've got a good memory Gemini you know th think back what were you what were you doing at the beginning of April um it may be that you were involved in something important but you I don't know, you forgot about it, you moved on, you got bored. Geminis often get bored. And now you have a chance to get things back on track. So think about anything that you might have been abandoning, that you might have abandoned, say, over the last six weeks. Now is the time to um, have another look at it you might realise that things have changed and what seemed difficult, say, five or six weeks ago, might actually now be pretty easy. But all you have to do, though, is just give it a go. And what, yeah, and don't be um, put off by what happened in the past because things really have changed. Cancer. You are quite concerned cancer about what you have and what you don't have um, it, it perhaps wasn't important before but now you can see that maybe you should have something that 
has been taken away or you want more of something and it matters and cancer is a sign which is actually often associated with hoarding. I don't know, did you know that? It, it can be a bit of a hoarder, some Cancerians. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I mean, excessive hoarding is obviously a bad thing. Uh, but hoarding is about what you have. And hoarding is not just about material things. Hoarding is about memories. You can, yeah, cancer, Cancerians tend to have very good memories and they can hoard things. Uh, they can hoard their memories over a lifetime. And right now, I think it's going to be perhaps more of an emphasis on physical things rather than conceptual things like memories. But still, I think, Cancer, you are pretty concerned about what you have and what you don't have. And you have to ask yourself... Are you being reasonable? And is it worth putting in the effort? Because, you know, there is this opposition between moon and the moon and Pluto. And this opposition between the moon and Pluto may encourage you to get really obsessed about what you have and what you don't have. And it could all become personal. And you have to think, you know, what is actually the value of this thing that you are so concerned about? Is it worth being obsessed about it? Um, maybe it's just an exaggeration and you just need to be a little more relaxed. But maybe it's important. And so, Cancer, cancer you have to make that decision. Now, if there is something you really feel you want especially if it's material or if, it, if it's money, then now might, might be the time to go for it because you are in an increasingly strong position. You know, the moon is in Leo and it is making the moon. Remember, moon is your ruler and it is starting to make a trine to Mars. Now, that trine to Mars doesn't really happen until tomorrow, Tuesday, but still... You can probably feel its influence that you can increasingly get your way if it's important. But just because you can get your way doesn't mean you should force it, And which goes back to what I was saying. How important is it, this thing that you want? Perhaps you feel that someone's taken something from you, that you're owed some money and you want to make a big fuss about it. Is it worth? Is it worth the disruption that uh, would I think be caused? So that is something to for you to consider. Now, talking about disruption, there may also be a certain amount of disruption in your social life if you have to deal with lots of different people. That is because there is a conjunction between the Sun and Uranus. Uh, in Taurus and from a Cancerian view Taurus is quite a sociable sign and so with Sun conjunct Uranus um, you can't expect friends and associates to behave as expected uh, they might do something you really hadn't planned on planned for on the other hand that we might be talking about some exciting event something that you really find interesting and um, in which case um, your social life could uh, you know, be a, a much needed spark and you could feel that uh, you know, you know, this is a chance to turn over a new leaf, meet new people and yeah, create some new excitement for yourself. So um, again, what kind of mood are you in? Are you in the mood for that kind of thing? I think there are limits. After all, the moon is opposition Pluto. The moon opposition Pluto is not just about money. It's it's just about you because the moon is your ruler. And so if you've got that with the moon opposition Pluto, I think that many Cancerians, especially Cancerians um, in uh, Americas, Western Europe, um, yeah, not so much in East Asia, Australia, New Zealand. That's more of a feature of tomorrow. But many Cancerians are going to have a feeling of 
their own power and the balance of their own power. It's always an equation. How much power do you have? How much power does the other person have? And uh, that balance could be of concern to you and you're not going to want to give too much power away. But you may feel you don't have a choice and you're certainly aware that there are forces out there that may be infringing on your freedom of action and being a cancer you're very aware of these kind of things because you know you are you are very sensitive so um, do give some consideration to the balance of power but just because you lose power it doesn't mean it's a long-term thing. It may be that some Cancerians may decide that today they need to give away some of their power, let other people take some of the initiatives, and maybe it's just not a big deal. Now, talking about other people, Saturn uh, is your is the ruler of Capricorn, which is your opposite sign, and today there is a sextile between Venus and Saturn. So with Venus sextile Saturn, that might reflect on the important people in your life. And I, I, I think will reflect quite well on them. You know, people who you've been able to trust in the past will today show themselves again to be trustworthy and reliable. And not not boring, though. I think that you can actually rely on the people you trust to not just be stable, but also to be entertaining and to perhaps give you a different view on the world, but in a fairly gentle way. And so perhaps um, by listening to another person, someone you trust, you might be able to get a new perspective or perhaps regain a perspective that you've recently lost. And so perhaps a lot of these struggles I was talking about, you know, connected with this moon opposition Pluto, when you actually talk to someone you know and trust, you may start to realise that maybe it's all a storm in a teacup, but perhaps you're just um, exaggerating and that you can just afford to relax. Leo. Today, Leo, there is a conjunction between the Sun and Uranus. And of course, the Sun is your ruler. Now, this conjunction between the Sun and Uranus happens every year, approximately. And so it's not exactly an unusual event. But still, it's happening today. And perhaps what's making this conjunction with Uranus extra special is the fact that it is tied in with Jupiter. So in a few days' time, you're going to have there's going to be Sun conjunct Jupiter, and so you know we can almost say that the Sun is on the Jupiter Uranus midpoint, but it's not quite there yet. And perhaps what we need to focus on today is the fact that the sun, your ruler, is con is conjunct Uranus. So because of that sun conjunct Uranus, I think, Leo, you're going to be very independent-minded. You are going to want to do things your way. And I don't think that you're really going to be in the mood for compromise. And that is especially the case if you're in the Americas and Western Europe because the moon is going to be in um, Leo, which is your sign for all the day or if you're in the Americas for at least half the day if you're in, in Europe. So that moon in Leo that puts extra emphasis on you. Uh, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, not quite so much. And you you won't get that blast of moon and Leo moon and Leo until tomorrow. But still, Australia, you know, if you're in Australia and New Zealand, you, you know you, the sun will be conjunct Uranus for a bit of time. Tomorrow it will still be conjunct. Um, 
um, Uranus. So don't feel you're missing out. So with that Sun conjunct Uranus, regardless of where you are, where where you are in the world, you're going to f feel very independent minded, and you're going to want to do things your way. And I think you could be quite stubborn, stubborn to the point where you might cause a fuss or a scene if things don't go your way. And I think, Leo, it's very important that you are in control of the unfolding drama. What you don't want, Leo, is the drama to be imposed upon you by outside forces. Now, why would that happen? Now, if you look at the thing from a psychological projection point of view, you could say, well, you're, you're at a stage where change is required, where something isn't right, or you need to improve things. And if you are keeping that to yourself, or if you feel that you just can't deal with change, then that change is going to be imposed upon you from the outside world. Um, the, that's what the universe will do. So maybe you're the one that needs to create the drama, because if you create the drama yourself, then that drama is not going to be imposed upon you from the outside, and you're going to have a greater sense of agency. So, Leo, do consider how you want to create change, how you want to be different, because you are different. You know you're different. I mean, that's a natural thing to tell a Leo. Leos like to think they're special. And I'm telling you, yes, you are special. And today, in particular, you are extra special. So take every opportunity to assert yourself, unless it's unnecessary, unless you're already in a position of, of control. And probably the area of your life where this Sun conjunct Uranus is going to be most important is in terms of career and business, if that is ap applicable to you. Um, because you are going to want to do things your way. You're going to certainly have ideas. Uh, maybe employers and authority figures aren't going to be comfortable with those ideas. But I think it's a time when you really do feel that these ideas do need expression. And in the process, Leo, you shouldn't feel that it's all about causing disruption and disharmony. It's actually, it's not. By thinking outside the box, by being independent minded, you can actually bring people together, or perhaps should I say force people together force people to cooperate. And that's something you actually can do. Get their attention, force them to cooperate, force them to have harmonious relations with each other and with you. So if you're really clever, Leo, yeah, you can actually force a harmonious situation. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that works. So perhaps, Leo, you'll have to work out what that actually means. But you can force cooperation. And I suppose that would be particularly the case if you were an authority figure. So if you're an authority figure and you've got, for example, people working under you, I think you can actually change the working environment and yeah, get people to cooperate with each other. I suppose that might also apply to, a, to your family. It needn't be about work or career. If you've got the family members squabbling, um, it doesn't have to be children squabbling, it can be adults squabbling, uh, you can bring order and you can force people to cooperate with each other. And that's the picture today, Leo. I think it's a very strong day. And I think it's a day when, yes, there might be past struggles, but I think whatever's going on, I think if you really assert yourself and you believe in yourself, then uh, I think you can really cover a lot of ground. Virgo. When I was talking to 
Gemini, I was talking a lot about Mercury and really the same applies to you because like Gemini, you have Mercury as your ruler and uh, with Mercury as your ruler, you, um, you, you know, your, your Mercury is in, Mercury is in Aries at the moment and Virgo is, sorry, Aries is, from a Virgoan view, Aries is quite an intense sign. There have been some powerful emotions brewing under the surface. And some time ago, uh, six weeks ago, April the 1st, Mercury went retrograde. Now, you're a Virgo. You, you hopefully will keep good records. Try to think back. What were you doing on April the 1st? April Fool's Day. Uh, what were you planning on? What in what direction were you going? You need to go back to that date and what was happening then because then Mercury, your ruler, was at around 27 Aries and so Mercury went backwards on April the 1st and it went backwards through Aries for three weeks until, I don't know, off the top of my head, was it around April 25th? It went direct and there might have been a big sigh of relief. Oh, Mercury's direct again. But the direct movement, the, the, the retrograde motion does take a little bit of time to recover from. And it's not until today that Mercury returns to where it was on April the 1st. So all that ground that has been lost over the, uh, over the last six weeks has finally been made up. And now... Uh, Virgo, you can start to consider where, what, where were you? What were you trying to do on April the 1st? Because it now might be a time to um, look back at what you're involved with and perhaps um, get things moving again. Uh, perhaps something had stalled, you'd given up on something, but now you can get it, get it together. And it seems to be something that's actually connected with quite deep feelings. Um, maybe it was something that you had a lot of negativity about at the time. You just felt this wasn't for you. Uh, it felt threatening, dangerous. But perhaps when you look at it again, you'll, you'll see it in a different and more positive light. But April the 1st aside, Mercury is now has now covered, re recovered all its lost ground. And that is really a very fortunate time for Virgos. It's a time when you can really start to move things forward. And let's not forget that Mercury, which is your ruler, is about to move into Taurus. Um, just a couple of days left. And when Mercury goes into Taurus, oh yeah, I think actually Mercury goes into Taurus, I think it's on Wednesday. So you've got two more days and that will, I think, be a, a, a big relief. And I think you're going to be a, a lot less introspective and things are going to become um, a lot less um, complicated than they were. So that is certainly something to look forward to, Virgo. Though right now... I think you probably still need a little more time to think things through. You you still understand that the world is complicated and still over the next couple of days perhaps there are certain things to work out and so you should not feel obliged to do anything today or tomorrow. Um, it perhaps is a time for a certain degree of preparation. Still, if you are with other people, uh, I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to be surrounded by lots of people, but if you're with a couple of other people, there are things you can do to bring people together. And I think you'll be able to bring people together 
I think because of your sensitivity, I'm, I know that Virgo has a, a reputation, I think probably an unfair reputation, for being somewhat insensitive and for not picking up on um, the emotional um, weather. Uh, so I understand that. But I think that's a bit of a stereotype. And a lot of people are quite insensitive today, by the way. Um, but not you. I think you are you are probably right now one of the more sensitive signs. And I think with your sensitivity, you're going to be able to pick up certain dynamics in terms of other people and how they relate to each other, or indeed how they're not relating to each other. And once you've picked it up, you'll be able to initiate change. You don't have to do it in a very over-the-top and dramatic way, but by initiating change, uh, I think people will actually respond to you um, quite well. Libra. Libra, today Venus is sextile Saturn and Venus sextile Saturn is, it's a very useful aspect. I wouldn't have said that it was a particularly exciting aspect, but it does allow you to create a certain amount of stability. Um, you are someone who can be trusted and you, you also you understand that if things, if things are going to get done, they have to be done properly and good organization and a good sense of detail is going to be really important. Now, these are not perhaps typically Libran things. I mean, Libra is not really a sign that is normally associated with detail and organization. But right now, with Venus sextile, Venus sextile Saturn, you will actually have a good organizational talent. Um, and I suppose that's relative. So ask yourself, how good are you at organizing things? And you may take the view that you're, might take the view you're a bad organizer, I don't know. Uh, but it's relative. Today, your organizational skills will be better than average. And your, your discipline will be better than average. And I think you'll be helped by a general sense of seriousness. Um, because you regard the world as being fairly, fairly serious, that there are some serious challenges to deal with, um, that encourages you to be serious. And because of this seriousness, um, I think that you can accomplish quite a lot, certainly in an organisational sense. And it's not a time when you should be trying too hard to get attention. Now, I think you might try to get attention. You might be concerned about attention. Um, I think that might be a mistake. Because if today you, were tr you tried too hard to get in touch with people, to get people to listen to you, I actually think you might be disappointed. And that might actually spoil things. Um, I understand that right now, especially if you're in the Americas or in Western Europe, it is becoming important to be noticed. But at the moment, you might not have what it takes and people, may, other people may be distracted or they may be just too into themselves to notice you or to give you the attention you deserve. So if you don't want to be disappointed, perhaps, Libra, you shouldn't try too hard. Um, and if you want to get people's attention, it should not be done in an overt and direct way. It's like you maybe have to sort of work behind the scenes. You have to engage in some preparation. And, you know, ask yourself, are you worthy of attention right now? Or rather, can you guarantee getting attention right now? Probably the answer is no. On the other hand, if you were to make a few changes, 
changes that may take a couple of days to work out. Um, would that be enough? Answer is probably yes. So maybe if you need outside support, you perhaps need to do a little more preparation. It, and, it, it, and so that way you're not going to be putting yourself in a position today where you feel rebuffed and that's going to be bad for your morale. Just just focus on yourself and start and, and focus on making useful but probably quite um, incremental changes. And that is probably the best way of handling the day's challenges. I, I think that uh, it... I think you, you, you're going to be successful provided you manage your expectations. Don't have too many expectations um, and don't feel that you need to act in the public arena. I know you want to act in the public arena. Um, you want attention, but maybe not today. Um, perhaps reconsider the situation tomorrow. Scorpio. I think... I think, Scorpio, you're actually in um, quite a good position. You have a strong sense of yourself and what you want to achieve. And you're, you're not in the mood for half measures. If you're going to do something, you're going to want to do it properly. And... I certainly think that you have the capacity for doing it properly. And you also are able to act quickly. So if you see an opportunity, you're going to go for it. And you won't apologize. You're just going to go for it. And I think in many cases, you're going to be really successful. Um, at the same time if you make small changes to things that might have been routine for ages small changes to a routine could actually have very dramatic results and if you have been involved in something that is difficult that you've been puzzling over for a long long time and you've been wondering whether it's ever going to work out you may get a breakthrough today. Um, it's going to be a breakthrough where it, suddenly something that was really difficult, was a real block, just suddenly just it happens. You make the move and you may feel that you can really breathe a sigh of relief. So really do do consider that so don't be lazy and don't give up on something uh, it may be that you're just really close to success success and just today if you can just put a little bit more energy in you you will get the breakthrough that you're looking for at the same time i think that many leos sorry many scorpios are starting to want to have an impact on society, on other people. Um, they want to be noticed. And that's a little bit unusual for a Scorpio. If you take the stereotypical Scorpio, you know, the stereotypical Scorpio, I don't know, snake hiding under a rock, for example. But that's not what today is about. I think today you are going to want attention. And if you want attention you have to build it up slowly, I think. You can't expect immediate attention. You have to um, prepare your ground and really make sure that you've got something to say and that you've, your actions are going to get, get attention. Um, maybe today you won't be quite ready, but I think tomorrow when the moon starts making a trine to Mars, I mean, it's already making a trine to Mars, but it's a, it's a bit of a way off. But tomorrow, the moon will be making a trine to Mars, and I think that could put you in a really good position. Uh, so perhaps that's something you need to work on today. Now, as far as other people are concerned, 
I can't help noticing that there is a conjunction between the sun and Uranus in Taurus. And of course, Taurus is your opposite sign. And sun conjunct Uranus can represent people who are quite willful, who like to get their way, who like to get attention. And there may be people who you just can't avoid. And these people might seem rather annoying. Uh, I mean, it could be seriously annoying. And you perhaps need to work out how best to deal with the situation. Um, you may feel that the best thing to do is to react. I won't say violently, but you just got to get rid of these people who are getting in your way. Alternatively, you could ask yourself, well, what is it about um, psychologically with this sun conjunct Uranus? And maybe you're being reminded by another person's actions about what you should be doing. Perhaps you're not doing something and someone else is doing it instead. And so perhaps you've allowed things to slip and if you were to be more dynamic and proactive, you wouldn't have this issue. And so that's perhaps a reminder, Scorpio, that you need to be positive and you need to start making things happen because if you don't make things happen then well someone else will happen sorry then someone else will make things happen also this sun conjunct uranus may say something about what's happening at work or in your business um, it's it may be about someone doing something or behaving in a way that is really disruptive and you weren't expecting. So from a career perspective, Scorpio, don't make assumptions about other people, um, whether they're your workmates, your employers, your employees, um, people you're trying to do business with. Do not make assumptions because with that sun conjunct Uranus, they may do something or say something that you just weren't expecting and you weren't prepared for. And Scorpio is a fixed sign. And sometimes when Scorpio has to deal with that, Scorpio just doesn't know how to respond. And you might see it as a threat. So what you have to do is you have to be flexible. And just because you're not prepared for something, just because it's a shock, doesn't necessarily mean to say it's bad. It's just a sign that perhaps the situation is a little more complicated and requires you to be more flexible to deal with an unexpected situation. So just be ready for the unexpected and I think you'll be fine. Sagittarius, you probably benefit from the moon moving into Leo. Yeah, the moon is moving into Leo. The moon has been in Cancer for a bit of time and it is now changing sign. Um, you're going to be particularly feeling that sign change if you're in the Americas, but even if you're in Western Europe, for the last half of the day, the moon is going to be in Leo. Okay, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, then... Um, the moon won't go into Leo until late this evening or pretty much pretty much tomorrow. But uh, I think for most people, uh, there will be a Leo emphasis today. But as I said, I think it's going to be strongest um, if you're in the Americas. And with the moon in Leo, you're going to feel that there are more opportunities, I think. I think that over the last couple of days, perhaps over the weekend, you've thought that uh, there were a, a certain amount of restrictions, um, that you weren't able to do everything you wanted to do. But now with the moon moving into Leo, there are m more opportunities. And I think you can actually start to see the world in a, in a different way. Um, perhaps in the past, 
you did you didn't think certain opportunities you didn't think they existed uh, but now they're there and it's just important though to be open-minded and consider ideas which on the face of it might be quite quite alien but don't analyze these ideas too much now there is some danger that Sagittarians may come across a concept or a view of a world which they immediately react badly to uh, and that might be because of moon, the moon being opposition Pluto you hear something that sounds nonsense that is actually quite threatening to you and you're, you're immediately you, you say no that is not the way it is that's your instinctive response but I would suggest you hold back um, you may be today exposed to ideas which are more logical than they sound so give everyone a fair chance listen to what you're hearing don't immediately get aggressive and um, tell people that's nonsense or um, try to be skeptical because there's a, there's a possibility that you're hearing challenging that you're hearing stuff that is challenging but it's also stuff that you actually need to need to hear and i understand sagittarius that right now you're going to be quite quick to um lay down the law when i say lay down the law that's bit of an exaggeration but to say well no this is not the case you know it's not the case you know you feel absolutely sure that it's not the case Uh, but before laying down the law and um, being judgmental uh, I would think it through and perhaps it's it's a case of holding fire until you really have understood the full picture also Sagittarius I would suggest that you are a little careful today from a health perspective I say this because there is a conjunction between the sun and Uranus Um, that sun and Uranus just may encourage you to um, go places or do things that are not particularly healthy that could be injurious to you um, getting yourself into something that into an environment that may be unhealthy maybe I'm thinking about dust or pollutants um, if you have a weakness uh, what the part of your body it is what most weak probably your throat uh, so perhaps be careful what you're consuming uh, what you're breathing in um, Uh, so try to have an environment which is as which is as healthy as possible and uh, places which are full of dust and chemicals really should be avoided particularly with that sun conjunct uranus that sun conjunct uranus it's like you may be fine but you just have that one whiff you breathe in something at one particular moment and you just know you breathed in something you should not have breathed in and it's bad and there may be an immediate reaction okay I'm not talking necessarily about some life-threatening emergency or anything just you know you know that feeling when you breathe something in you feel something in your throat and you know it's just not going to go away so be a bit careful with that sun conjunct uranus turning to relationships i think that people are trying hard to create harmony and i think sagittarius it's just important you respect that you might not respect it Uh, you might not understand what people are trying to do Um, but other people they want peace and quiet no they don't necessarily want quiet they certainly want peace and they want a harmonious environment and they want everyone to be happy and they want you to be happy as well Uh, at least the people that are worth bothering you with with are trying to make are trying to create 
um, an overall harmonious environment. And I think Sagittarius, it's just important you respect that. And you try to work out what people are trying to achieve and what people are trying to communicate. I think in the first instance, you might not listen. You'll be engaged in other things and you may not fully appreciate what people are grappling with. But if you listen to your feelings, if you try to be sensitive and if you think about it and if you, you know, you you perhaps want to also think about not just today, but history. So if you're with someone who is important to you, think about everything that that person has been doing over the last, say, six weeks. And when you think about what that person has been doing over the last six weeks, it will start to make sense. And I think you'll start to have a greater appreciation of why they're doing what they're doing. And then you'll be in a position to offer them um, a, a bit of sympathy and understanding and hopefully some cooperation. Capricorn, you are in, in one sense, a, a state of mind where you want things to happen. Um, I, I think that uh, you are going to get bored quite easily today. I mean, that's a bit surprising, perhaps for a Capricorn. But I think that you're going to be in the mood for action. I think you're going to want things to happen. And I th that is because of um, a conjunction, but the conjunction between Sun and Uranus. And that Sun in that that Sun Uranus conjunction, yeah, it's in Taurus. It's uh, in your in a in a part of your chart that is very much created with sorry, which is very much connected with creativity. And the idea of just the same thing happening, what happened yesterday happens today. Fundamentally, that's not going to not, not going to be what you want, and it's not right for you. So perhaps, Capricorn, you need to consider how you can shake things up. And it all starts with you yourself. And that Sun conjunct Uranus indicates that it's a time when you can do something which is really unique to you. Um, now, it may be that the outside world appreciates what you're doing. Maybe they don't appreciate what you're doing, but it doesn't matter. It's unique to you. And it's not something that has to be on show and if you want you can just engage with it in a completely private way um, if other people if no one knows what you're doing well arguably so much the better and i th i think that sense of privacy is emphasized by the fact that the moon is moving into leo it's most over moon has been in cancer um, okay, it's still going to be in Cancer for all day if you're in Australia or New Zealand. But the moon, even if you're in Australia or New Zealand, the moon will move out of Cancer um, late tonight and move into Leo. But with the moon in Leo, you are going to feel that you don't necessarily need other people. Maybe you did in the past, but right now... You know, you're engaged with things that don't require cooperation. Um, they require some thought, uh, some perhaps some deep thought. And deep thought is not something that you can do in company in most cases. And that moon in Leo uh, makes an opposition to Pluto. And that adds to the intensity of the situation. And you're going to be thinking very hard about what is uh, the purpose of it all. Why are you doing what you're doing? And I think this goes going back to your creative self-expression. It's you know, creativity is is, a, is an overused word, and 
ideally it's something that is really very special to you i mean people talk about creativity left right and center and it's usually nine nine times out of ten it's not creative at all it's just some piece of you know commercial branded garbage very often that's what creativity is but we're not talking about commercial branded garbage in your case we're talking about something that is very special to you um it's it doesn't need outside support it doesn't need money it just needs you having space to do what is important to you and that really is as far as it goes now i should though say something about relationships especially if you're in america or europe because the moon is making this opposition to pluto and the moon does represent uh is what's well, ruler of cancer which is your opposite sign so the moon can be representative of the other person in your life or other people in your life so with moon opposition pluto um it's is as it does seem that there is at least one other person who is taking themselves quite seriously i mean i think that you are taking yourself quite seriously and that's good but i think another person is also taking themselves seriously and they may be having not just deep thoughts but they may be having a few issues they may see things as a past struggle they may see things in a quite a dramatic way and it is possible that there is another person out there who is concerned about money um there's a money issue that someone else needs to discuss wants to discuss and it's driving them crazy and perhaps you need to be aware of what it is now it could be that someone wants money from you i suppose it depends on the situation or someone wants more money from you um or it may just be about money in general may have nothing to do with you uh, but it seems that uh, someone else's concerns about money and what they own and what they don't own could have an impact and you perhaps have to make a decision how you address this thing maybe you need to bring someone down to earth um that is a possibility but you know even if it's not money uh, certain people are in quite an intense mood and um maybe you should spend a little bit of time trying to work out what's going on aquarius today there is a conjunction between the sun and uranus and it's in taurus so this conjunction between the sun and uranus i would have said was quite powerful not least because it's in an an angular section um of your chart uh it's you know it's 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 in taurus taurus is in an angle it's quite a private angle from an aquarian perspective and that might be simply about your massive desire to be independent and to be in control and you're really not going to want to engage with the outside world that is a possibility but we should also remember that the sun is ruler of your opposite sign and your opposite sign is leo so ruler of leo is um uh ruler of leo is the sun it's conjunct uranus so it may not just be about you valuing your independence it may be about someone else valuing their independence and it may be about someone else being very very stubborn in fact it might be you and someone else being very very stubborn there is a lot of stubbornness around today and everyone thinks that their ideas are the best ideas and one wonders is there any scope for compromise and i think matters are made more complicated by the fact that the moon is now moving into leo 
which is of course your opposite sign. And when the moon moves into Leo, it makes an opposition to Pluto. So finding agreement today may actually be very difficult um, because everyone has, is stuck in their own positions and people have made up their mind. And I suppose that's a reflection of society, isn't it? You know, we talk about a polarized society, um, you know, in America, you know, we know Trump and Biden and people either loving things, hating things. Um, you've kind of got a, a civil war that's not, uh, it's not geographically based. It's its kind of, it's two, two people in the same place and having completely different views and that's perhaps part of a problem with America but you're picking up on all of that um, it really is something you're you're aware of and actually say this is not all about not just about America it's everywhere isn't it so sort of, I'm looking at it from an American perspective um, but everywhere you do get these f fractures in society of people just not being able to communicate because they have such different views of the world and it's in and I think you're picking up on it in particular and you have a view of the world someone else has a view of the world and it's just very difficult to bring anything together but the situation is not hopeless after all Venus is making a sextile to Saturn and Venus is in Taurus and Venus is a planet that is associated with harmony and creating relationships and Saturn is your ruler so with Venus sextile Saturn then I actually think you have a real opportunity for creating links and maybe I won't say use the word compromise but maybe allowing people to talk and communicate uh, it's not really about compromise compromise is too much to hope for I, I don't even know if compromise is a good thing because if people compromise people still have their own views and you haven't actually dealt with the underlying problem I think it's more about you being able to get people to communicate who have very different views on the world and of course you have your views of the world and you which are very strong and other people have their views and I think with Venus sex or Saturn I think you can actually help break you can go some way towards breaking the ice and I think that that Venus sextile Saturn in a general sense should be quite useful uh, in terms of relationships so however independent-minded you feel I do think there are definitely things you can do to get on better with other people and in certain situations in certain situations to actually meet new people and be able to form some kind of a relationship with them a relationship that can be on many different levels but uh, you'll have to see what happens Pisces you are probably thinking that uh, there are things that need to be done um, you know, you don't really want to do it. Um, as far as you're concerned, there are always better things to be done. But right now, you start, you're starting to feel a sense of obligation. And I, I think it's just important to work out what this obligation is actually about. You know, sometimes we can feel obliged to do something which is really nothing to do with us. It's almost obsessive. Um, and because we get so tied up with obligation we reach a stage where we just can't do anything and so that's uh, uh, one possibility and the other possibility is that you start to get a sense a very real sense of obligation you, you see that there is something that needs to be done other people are not doing it and so that responsibility falls on you and I don't think that you should get upset about that um, you should be kind of be happy that you were there and by being there you can make sure that something doesn't fall apart so perhaps there's a sort of a timeliness there um, 
you're available to take on this obligation and, and as a result of taking on this oblig obligation um, you prevent some mishap from happening at the same time uh, Venus is making a sextile aspect to Saturn so Saturn is as you know it's ruling it's moving through your sign and so with Venus sextile Saturn I think this gives you an opportunity to create a certain amount of control wherever you are so if you do feel that things are getting out of control um, things are getting a bit chaotic um, it may just be about your living space it may be about how other people are behaving uh, you are in a position to restore order and you can restore order without causing offense um, you'll be able to make your position clear uh, I think that in most cases you're going to sound very reasonable and in the end um, I think that you're going to get what you want and at the same time I think that you can improve relations with other people and I think that other people really are in the mood for improving relations you know people fundamentally want harmony I mean when I've been talking about these 12 signs I've been suggesting that there had there could be quite a lot of disharmony today but fundamentally people want harmony and I think that the people you have to deal with today they want harmony they don't want trouble and if you can actually understand people's need for harmony and reflect back people's need for harmony then I think you'll be doing everyone um, a big service and that's it for the 12 signs and I now want to look at today from the perspective of the I Ching so I asked the question what is Monday going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video and the first hexagram I got was hexagram 2 the receptive so you'll see with this hexagram that all of the lines are broken and it's pure negativity it's saying that there is nothing we should be trying to do at least in a positive creative sense it, it's not a day for pushing forward with big ideas um, and I'm reminded of the fact that today there is this Sun conjunct Uranus and that's a very powerful conjunction and it is quite a dramatic revolutionary conjunction and it does push a lot of us into taking the initiative feeling that we should come up with um, big proposals that we should make things happen but the itching is saying no uh, yeah there may be some big things going on out there but it's not for us to initiate change or revolution um, we need to respond we need to understand what is going on around us and, and be receptive not be active we need to respond rather than act and we have uh, we do have two moving lines here um, and that's indicating how we respond to the situation now that uh, this fourth line here it gives us the symbolism of something tied up in a sack and that's talking about our abilities and what we can do or our, all our skills and everything that makes us useful and individual and creative and it's all tied up in a sack and this means that for some reason we don't want to show off what we can do 
we want to keep our abilities to ourself. Um, we don't, we don't, yeah, we don't want to show off our talents. And the I Ching is neutral about this. It doesn't say that that's a good or a bad thing. It just seems to, be, it seems to really say that as just as a matter of fact. And so I think we do have to consider that. Uh, so what are you holding back today? Um, you know, because you've got these challenges, there are opportunities today. Um, although, remember, it's a receptive. This is not a time for initiating things. But you've got talents and you've got opportunities and you are keeping them in a sack. Um, is that the right thing to do? Maybe you think it would be dangerous to reveal what you can do. Maybe it's not the right thing to do. Maybe you should be showing people how clever you are. But you have to consider the situation because the I Ching is not, is not assigning blame here. And then we get the top line moving. And the top line moving is quite dramatic. And it may again reflect the Sun conjunct Uranus. And it talks about two dragons being in conflict with one another. Uh, you've got one dragon is the good dragon and the bad dragon. Um, so if, for example, evil makes itself felt, that is one dragon, then the other dragon has to, has to fight the dragon. So you have this image, I don't know, this image in the sky of these two dragons fighting each other. And both dragons are going to hurt each other. Uh, because they're they're fighting, um, and so we may start to become aware of a struggle between good and evil um, going on, and and I, again I think that links to that to this conjunction between the sun and Uranus. Is there anything we can do? Uh, probably not, because this is you know this is this is the top line of a receptive. It's it's. You know, we're not there to act. We're just there to respond. We have to work out what's going on. But in the end, it, there comes a stage where the dragons start to fight. And we may just be a bystander. Um, and in fact, I think for one of the, when I was talking about one of the, um, uh, one of the signs, when I was going through the 12 signs, I was, for one of the signs, I was sort of saying, well, it's like being, witness to these two giants fighting each other you can hear the the sort of earthquake under your under your feet as these giants are stomping and maybe this is how it feels with these two dragons um trying to you know trying to battle for supremacy and this hexagram the receptive it does move because we've got two moving lines and it moves to hexagram 35 which is advancement so it does seem, in the end, things will settle down and by the end of the day we can start making progress and um, perhaps we'll have a better idea about what is going on. But it's advancement, it's... Uh, um, I mean, I think this hexagram... Hexagram 35, you know, it, it is about progress or advancement. Um, but it's advancement which takes place, uh, which, which um, I think advancement is the Winkup translation of this. And I think the Wilhelm one calls 35 progress. But it's, it's not something that we really initiate ourselves. We're doing it... Um, in a somewhat, from a somewhat subservient position. We can't expect um, everything to, you know, everything to go our way. We have to take it slowly. And remember that first hexagram was hexagram two, which is a receptive. So we are perhaps uh, advancing under the auspices of someone else's authority. And we need to be quite realistic about what we can achieve. Advancement doesn't mean that we're actually reaching our goal. It means we're moving towards our goal and perhaps things are starting to resolve themselves. 
but I think we have to take it um, very slowly and we need to we do need to keep our expectations in check and now I want to talk about the Eurovision Song Contest uh, which happened over the weekend and so the Eurovision Song Contest has been um, going on for a long time and it started in 1956 and uh, in fact the the first time uh, it took place, yeah, with 1956, I think the first Eurovision Song Contest took place in um, Lugano in Switzerland. Um, and you know, at that time, uh, you know, not so many countries were involved in it. Um, and um, this is a chart for nine o'clock. I believe this is when the final started and it's kind of interesting that in this the Eurovision Song Contest you've got a full moon uh, sun in Gemini moon in Sagittarius um, I think that the the moon in Sagittarius in 1956 um, does give an, perhaps an indication of the nature of the Eurovision Song Contest I mean the Eurovision Song Contest um, it's considered in some ways not to be a particularly serious event. Um, there has been a sort of a lightness and a triviality to the Eurovision Song Contest. And perhaps that's Moon and Sagittarius. And the fact that you've got a full moon uh, maybe talks about the adversarial nature of the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, one of the one of the features of the Eurovision Song Contest is that countries vote for each other. Um, and so because countries are voting for each other, then national rivalries and what's you know, which country is popular at a particular time are going to be reflected in votes. So I'm um, I think traditionally, for example, uh, I don't know whether it's entirely true, but Greece and Turkey would not give each other points. Isn't that right? You know, there's always that rivalry between Greece and Turkey. Um, uh, so, you know, a few years ago after the Ukraine war, Ukraine gets gets lots of votes because, you know, because Ukraine is, you know, flavor of the month. And so... The fact that you've got these countries being able to give each other votes, so it does kind of reflect these sort of crude, perhaps these crude rivalries in in Europe. I don't know to what extent that is true and anymore, um, but I think that was a little bit of a factor with uh, the entry from Ukraine. And that's a full moon, and that is perhaps the adverse, uh, adversarial nature uh, of the um, of it, and it's it's not didn't happen just after a full moon. It just happened just after an eclipse. So, moon in Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, North Node in Sagittarius. I, th I think that yeah, I think there is something so Sagittarius, as in there is a tackiness to Sagittarius. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not saying anything bad about Sagittarius. There can be a tackiness to Sagittarius. It's just all over. It's all it's all out there. It all hangs out. And that can be a Sagittarian feature of the Eurovision Song Contest. And uh, it's also Gemini. I mean, Sagittarius and Gemini, they're both mutable. Um, there is that Sun, Mercury, conjunction in Sagittarius there is there can be a triviality to Gemini and um, so I I would have said that full moon um, does reflect it well it has been a very successful uh, competition I mean this is a competition that's been going on since 1956 um, it pretty much dominates the post-war European cultural scheme uh, scene I mean I suppose some might just say that it's Euro trash uh, but it's certainly successful. And um, that's a reminder that you can start something on a full moon and it can work. 
you know, I would not choose a full moon to start a new venture. But clearly, in this case, uh, the full moon has worked. I mean, maybe it's the fact that you have Mercury in Gemini. That's a, that's a good place, a good place for Mercury to be. So that is the Eurovision Song Contest. And the first person to win uh, <coughs> the Eurovision Song Contest was uh, was Swiss, Lise Assia, and she was born on March the 3rd, 1924, and I think she died in her 90s, and apparently she was really into the Eurovision Song Contest. She kept trying to to submit entries almost until, she, until her death. Um, I, so she, she uh, this is a chart of the person who, the first winner, uh, I'm not going to say a great deal about her, but what's kind of interesting, she's got a sun conjunct Uranus. Maybe there's something quite sun conjunct Uranus about the Eurovision Song Contest. We've just had a sun conjunct, sun conjunct Uranus, and of course another Swiss singer has won it. Um, and she's got the moon in Aquarius, uh, making a sextile to Jupiter. I don't have her time of birth, but she's got Moon in Aquarius, sextile, sextile Jupiter in Sagittarius, and she's got Mars in Sagittarius. So it's not surprising that someone who, who has Mars-Jupiter conjunction, a wide Mars-Jupiter in conjunction um, in Sagittarius um, has done, did well, so well in the first um, 1956 Eurovision Song Contest. And yeah, it was uh, very important to her. And I mean, she's got Venus in Aries. I just, you know, it's a very sort of fiery thing. Venus, and she's almost got a, a grand trine in fire signs. I mean, Venus, trine Neptune, trine Jupiter. Uh, so that was Lise Asia, who was the first person to win um, the European Eurovision Song Contest with a song which was called refrain and this moves us to the current eurovision song contest now i understand that there are fi there were finals and it, i think it happened over a, a couple of days but uh, the eurovision song contest i'm going for the finals which was took place um this is may the 11th at nine o'clock it was in malmo in sweden so this Eurovision Song Contest, you can see it had at nine o'clock, we had Sun-Uranus conjunction on the seventh house cusp and it was tied in with Jupiter. So we've also got Saturn on the IC. So it, it was it's quite a dramatic time to have the finals of the Eurovision Song Contest. And so this Eurovision Song Contest took place against the backdrop of a Sun-Uranus conjunction and the Sun actually in fact making a starting to make a conjunction to Jupiter and so we've had all sorts of things going on um, we had one of the contestants Juiced Klein was uh, disqualified uh, before the final uh, for making some was it an aggressive or an offensive gesture towards a female cameraman, camera person, sorry, camera woman? Um, so we had that. Uh, we had uh, big <laughs> protests regarding the Palestinian, uh, the, the, the Palestinian, the Gaza, pro we had Gaza protests. And you know, I, there was an Israeli singer. I think the Israeli singer came, uh, came in fifth place. So there has been um, a lot of drama here, and I think that the drama um, uh, had, has really shown it shows in this chart with this with this Sun Uranus conjunction. Now, I was asked to look at the Dutch contest. One of the commenters uh, commented on my last video asked me to look at the uh, the Dutch contestant who obviously was um, was disqualified so I'll start off by looking looking at uh, at him so his name is Juiced Klein and 
Juiced Klein, um, he had this song, I think his song was called Euro Papa, but he didn't, or you, uh, and but he didn't, he didn't get round to um, actually competing because he got disqualified. Uh, so as far as the background of Juice Klein, he's he is apparently an orphan. Uh, he lost, I think, his mother died of cancer, and his I think he lost both his parents. Uh, he apparently be making would make was making YouTube videos. He started making YouTube videos in his in, in two thousand eight. I mean, which reminds me, I made started making YouTube videos in twenty. Uh, I mean, I in twenty in twenty twenty three. I le- I I left it too late. I mean, so he started making YouTube videos. If he made it, you know, before he was ten years old. So you know, no wonder he's he's so successful. Apparently, he's a really big deal in Holland. And I don't have a time of birth. I, I couldn't find a time of birth, so I'm going for a noon time of birth. But he was born in Leuwarden, Netherlands. And um, you can see that he has got a Venus-Mars conjunction in Capricorn. Very useful conjunction, that Venus-Mars. I mean, Venus-Mars is charismatic, uh, appealing people like him or at least with venus mars okay one thing about venus mars conjunctions if you if you're relying on venus mars to be attractive it means that some people find you completely unattractive with venus mars and some people find you really attractive so venus mars is particular so if you take um some kind of universal sex goddess like Marilyn Monroe. She didn't have a Venus Mars. She doesn't didn't have a Venus Mars conjunction. She didn't have any Venus Mars aspects. Venus Mars. If you've got Venus Mars, you're not going to be universal. You're going to because Mars is aspecting Venus. That can be a point of tension. Um, it, it's going to put people off. But anyway, he's got enough people to sort of support him. Uh, who think he's attractive, think he's charismatic, and he has got a he's got Mercury conjunct Pluto. Um, so Mercury conjunct Pluto is in Sagittarius. It's very persuasive. Uh, it it's someone who's able to communicate in a very particular way. I mean, it can be associated with propaganda of perhaps pushing some kind of message. And clearly he was someone who was very good at dealing with social media and in particular YouTube. I mean, being a, starting his YouTube channel at 2000, in 2008. And I suppose with Mercury Pluto being really able to make the most of it. So that's, that's his chart. He has got a wide... Um, he was born of a wide Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So it's perhaps not surprising that, you know, that we, he made such a, an, a, a big impression to the extent of getting disqualified at the time of the Eurovision Song Contest, which 2024, which had a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And notice his Uranus. His Uranus is his mercury Pluto conjunction is sextile his Uranus. So I would have thought that uh, that really does help him to really push his message and to force people to uh, take take note of him. So that's just Klein's horoscope. And another person who was involved in this was I might as well look at the Israeli singer and I mean, that would Eden Golan that must have required some courage to um, go to Malmo and uh, and um, perform given the environment and the hostility to um, the hostility she must have had to face um, so she has the moon in Aquarius like um we don't know. I don't have her time of birth, but like Lise Asia, the first person who won the Eurovision Song Contest, she has the moon in Aquarius. Uh, so I suppose if you've got the moon in Aquarius and you're having to deal with a potentially hostile crowd, um, you would have 
moon in Aquarius perhaps is able to have a certain amount of detachment there and to be able to sort of distance herself from uh what is what is going on uh and that she's got potentially got moon moon square moon square sun uh there uh so that's her chart i didn't really want to say very much about it because i don't i don't have a time of birth um but uh, she was able to get through it. Oh, notice that she has, when she was born October the 5th, 2003, there was an exact Charon Saturn um, opposition. Now, I think that she, her history, by the way, I think both her parents came from the Soviet Union. So, and I think that she's been threatened, she's been threatened by certain Crimean websites because I think she, sorry, Ukrainian websites because she visited Crimea after it was annexed by Russia. So she got criticism, maybe even threats from Ukrainian, from Ukrainian sources. And uh, that may be part of the, you know, the, the Charon opposition, Saturn, um, which has got, there's a T-square here, so the sun in Libra, sun square Saturn, it's tough, isn't it, for her? And uh, with, with the sun square Saturn, square Charon, um, there must be a certain sense of rejection and wounds there. And I suppose that would have been quite a Charon experience for her, having to perform in Malmo and with all this kind of pressure. But I'm sorry to be vague about her chart, but I don't. I mean, I don't have a time of birth and um, it's difficult to put it into any form of context. Then there is a winner. The winner is Nemo and Nemo is Swiss. So in 1956, there was a Swiss winner of the Eurovision Song Contest and we have another winner and he was born on October the 3rd, 1999. Um, I sort of remember, sorry, October. August the 3rd, 1999. I remember August 19. I remember there was a big eclipse. I think it was August the 11th. So he was born just before. Um, now, when I say he, in fact, his pronouns are they. So his song, which is called The Code, was, I think, written by non-binary. You know, it was, well, it was to, to sort of talk about the non-binary existence moving beyond um gender you know then that, that's i suppose you know this is what i was saying perhaps when at the beginning of this video when i was talking about camille paglia talking about the fact that when with this obsession with gender and eurovision song contest seems to be obsessed with gender or the lack of gender and it seems to um want to you know want to give top first place to a song about gender is you know it's just illustrative perhaps of society and the, the fact with our obsession about gender if if Camille Paglia is right this is a sign of the collapse of western society and you know with the Eurovision Song Contest it is something completely trivial but it's also reflecting what's going on in society and it's sort of dancing around on perhaps on the brink of some kind of collapse and catastrophe but it doesn't take away from the fact that Nemo was the winner and here's his chart and Nemo has um, a Venus Mars sextile not surprising is it someone who uh, sorry did I did I say Venus Mars sextile no he's not sorry he hasn't got a Venus Mars sextile but his Venus Mars midpoint is at um, eight degrees Libra. I mean, you can see that by eye, can't you? That his Venus Mars midpoint. So there you can see Venus and Mars are eight degrees apart. So that would mean, yes, he's got his Venus Mars midpoint there at eight degrees Libra. The Sun Pluto midpoint. Look at his Sun. He's got a Sun trine Pluto. Uh, his Sun trine Pluto midpoint is also around eight degrees Libra. So he's got Sun, sun Pluto trine and 
his Sun Pluto midpoint is on the Venus Mars midpoint. So that shows that he is that they are able, sorry, let's get his pronouns right, but they are able to show their power and their sexuality in a very uh, dramatic way and in a powerful and compelling way. Uh, notice, by the way, he's got his Uranus at 14 Aquarius. Um, his Uranus that Lise Asia, let's go back to her chart. She's got, assuming she was born at midday, she's got her moon at noon was at 15 Aquarius. So it's kind of interesting that potentially Nemo is picking up on the 1956 Swiss winners um, moon, in Aqu moon in Aquarius. But so this Sun Pluto midpoint and the Venus Mars midpoint were picked up at the time of the Eurovision at the time of the final. So this is a chart of, there's Nemo's chart in the middle and there is um, the chart when it started in Malmo. And you, so notice that Mars is at eight degrees Aries. So Mars was on his Venus Mars midpoint and Mars was on his Sun Pluto midpoint. In other words, transiting Mars was picking up on an absolutely critical midpoint configuration in his chart. So he had Mars, he had Sun-Pluto trine, Mars picks up on it. Venus-Mars, well, very, very wide sextile between Venus and Mars. I think too wide for me to count, but it has a sextile feel to it when Mars is on the his Venus-Mars midpoint. And that's how he was perhaps able to um, to project it, to project his his power, and it wasn't just Mars on that midpoint. The beginning of the right at the beginning of the um, Eurovision, the, the the finals at nine o'clock, the Moon was at eight forty six Cancer, and Mars was at eight thirty four Aries. So there was an exact Moon Mars square at the beginning of the finals of the Eurovision Song Contest. So Mars was square his Venus Mars, so Moon was square his Venus Mars midpoint, it was square his Sun Pluto midpoint, and Mars was of course on those midpoints as well, so Moon was triggering that, and I think that really shows us why he was, why he had a really, why, sorry, why they had a really good chance of winning the um, Eurovision Song Contest. By the way, I think he was a favourite. I think he was one of the favourites. I think it was there was a beforehand there was a high chance he was going to win anyway. I don't think this was a surprise. So those are a few a few thoughts about the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, sorry to rant a bit um, about the fall of Western civilization, uh, but I thought I just had to put that in. Um, it's no reflection on the Eurovision Song Contest itself. It's no reflection on Nemo. They are just symptoms of it. Uh, so there's no no criticism is meant there. And uh, yeah, I hope you I hope you found that of some interest. If you did enjoy this video, I would be grateful if you were to like it. If you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, I'd be really, really grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks for listening and I will talk to you again tomorrow.